Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for being here today. Um, a very, very warm good afternoon to all the guests that have joined us from far and beyond, to in other cities and other countries as well, especially to those who are logged in from the web stream and to all of our employees that are out here. It's so exciting to be with you all today. Um, and uh, just before I get started, if I can get a clicker for my event, would be great, guys. Thank you. Um, it's been an incredible time since, uh, since last year when we reconnected here in Ignite 16. Um, I remember we were still, uh, oh, well, what do you know? I've got some magic tricks up my sleeve. Um, we, were, we, were, we were a relatively small team. Uh, we had relatively small funds. We had, uh, and, and now things have changed. So let me try and give a quick recap as to what we've accomplished over this last one year. When we met here last year, we were 500,000 users, 150 employees. I'm pleased to report to you that over since the last Ignite to this time, we've actually gone over. to 3 million users and 336 employees. Today, we are officially the largest health and fitness app in India. And as a company, we're marching towards profitability month by month. Healthify Me last year was, um, was a calorie tracking application. It allowed people to track their steps, nutrition, fitness, water and weight. It allowed people to get access to nutritionists and trainers um, to help them lose weight and to find better balance in life. And it gamified their experience by providing them points, um, connecting them in a leaderboard, and, and encouraging them and motivating them um, to go beyond. Today, Healthify Me has grown on to becoming a tailored platform that allows people to not just track their calories, but get a guided plan to transform them towards a better version of themselves. It also allows them to go beyond weight loss plans and actually connect for managing their medical conditions better, for preventing things like diabetes and hypertension, for managing situations, say, during pre-pregnancy, post-pregnancy phase, et cetera, and connect with nutritionists and trainers to achieve even more. Um, we also allow people to get engaged with incredible content that is custom tailored and designed for them, that is curated for them based on their data. When we last met, Healthify Me was the number one health and fitness app in the country on both iOS and Play Store. Today, I'm excited to tell you that over the course of the last one year, and as of 9 a.m. yesterday, we officially are the number one app on Play Store in the country across all categories. <laughs> well, it's, it's not a small achievement. We certainly are a small company, but this is not a small achievement by far. To hit 4.6 ratings is, is no joke. No app in India has yet achieved 4.7. I only know of a couple that are at 4.6, and it's quite incredible. To, to, be at that, uh, to be at that stage. I think it's a testimony to the company's product user experience and design that has allowed us to be there and to our engineering. Last Ignite, we asked ourselves a question as to how can we help people make better lifestyle decisions using data. That's what we left at Last Ignite, if you may remember. And we have accomplished a lot about that. And today, I want to focus the bulk of my conversation around how we've been able to deliver that. But before I get into some of that, I think it's important to understand why are we trying to do that? Why allow people to make better lifestyle decisions using data? Is this an incredible problem to solve at all? Or is this something that we want to do because it's something we like doing? And here are some thoughts for you guys. We are in a global obesity crisis as we know it. For the first time in human history, there are more people obese than those who are malnourished. This is a problem of a very recent past. For millennia, for, for tens of thousands of years, we as humanity, as civilization, were always fighting against famine and hunger. We never had the privilege of high food technology, supply chains established, um, urbanized living where you can actually get food at your tap of the finger. That has happened literally in this last one century and more so in the last one decade. Um, it is only very recently, not more than 10 or 20 years ago, that the people who are more obese have increased than those who are malnourished. And today, 
believe it or not, two billion people in the country, in the world, are, are obese or overweight. And the biggest problem there is that the solution creators are in fact very few. There's simply not enough nutritionists in the world to cater to two billion people. We only have about a million odd nutritionists qualified in the world today, order of magnitude, give or take. Right? And, and if all of them were to be deployed to help these two billion individuals, we would need to have, we would need to scale one nutritionist to 2,000 people, and we will need to provide access, something that obviously would be extremely challenging. So what's been the solution? Solution has been a huge rise in self-service health and fitness apps, right? Today, health and fitness as a category is the number third category globally after social and chat apps. You know, Google Fit, Apple Health, Samsung Health, and several others, including ourselves, my fitness pal, some prominent names. In fact, raise your hands if you've ever used a health and fitness app or have one health and fitness app downloaded on your phone. Just raise it right up, right? It's pretty much everybody in this room. Um, Question is, have they been effective? Right? You've all downloaded them. Now, on honesty, those of you who raise that, raise your hand if you've diligently engaged with your health and fitness app for more than three months. I see only a handful. Right? And that is a reality that we live in, right? um, is that there is a lack of adherence, accountability, and there is a lack of knowledge when you're operating self-service applications. Right? You tend to sort of fall off the track. Right? But there is a solution. Um, it's in the assisted services space. Um, is there a better clicker I can use? I'd appreciate that. I don't think this is really working. Or if someone can just manage me with the slides. Yeah, thank you. Sorry for the interruption, guys. One second. Sorry about that, guys. As you know, we are not a media company, neither we are an event management company. We are tech geeks, and all of this presentation before you has been put together by our own little humble engineers and designers, so bear with us in some of these technical difficulties. Uh, hopefully, we'd be large enough as an enterprise to get it outsourced next time. Any which way, moving on. The problem is that they've not been effective. They've been facing with lack of adherence. And, uh, and the issue is that, assist but the, the, the good advantage is that assisted services is a model that we know works, at least on our platform, 80% of our premium consumers engage with us weekly. There's a clear accountability and outcomes, and the best part is, and this is not a figure I've disclosed previously, but we have less than 0.5% refunds, which means that people actually stick out to their platform. They actually engage with us, and they actually turn towards, uh, you know, towards better discipline and regimen. Now, outside the global issue, there's an Indian dilemma as well. We've had a rising middle class. We've had about a couple of hundred people who are getting out of poverty, moving into high income segments, getting out of rural lifestyle, moving into urban lifestyles. At the same time, we're facing with a massive growing health crisis. We've got 150 million Indians today who are obese. In fact, the percentage of obesity in India has doubled in the last one decade alone, from around 14% to 29%. And today, 29% of all adult urban Indians are obese. We, but the unique opportunity that we see in that entire model is the massive growth in the mobile phone. Right? There's been a huge increase in smartphone penetration. The same couple of hundred million people who are either overweight, obese, hypertensive, marching towards diabetes, also have smartphones. And, and there's, obviously, you'd like to use the tool that is present with everyone to solve the major problem at hand. But I think what India provides here is a larger opportunity. The larger opportunity is that we've got lakhs, that is hundreds of thousands, of qualified nutritionists in our country, sitting in their homes, usually, and unfortunately those who have fallen off the work radar, typically in their late 20s, if not early 30s. They're typically women, and typically post-marriage, many of them stop working um, in, in, health, in, in offline clinics, or they may move out from tier one cities, and therefore don't have access to the markets, and you've got this highly qualified trained workforce. So think about it. On one hand, you've got two billion people who are obese, which is a massive fire on the house. On the other hand, you've got a few hundred thousand qualified nutritionists who can solve that problem. Essentially, our own firemen or firewomen. But they don't have a, for lack of a better word, a hose to sort of douse out this fire out there. Right? That's a real huge problem that exists in the world. And, and someone has to solve it. 
And, and that's exactly what we're trying to do. Now, how we believe it can be solved is by providing these nutrition and fitness services on the cloud and by scaling it with data and by scaling it with artificial intelligence. And that is why it is important to ask ourselves that question as to how we can help people make better decisions using data. Now, we already have a working solution. As we already declare, we are the largest, most liked health app in, in, in India. We've got millions of consumers who are tracking with us, providing us with billions of data points every day, and getting advised by India's top coaches. Um, but if we do need AI to support at scale, at the end of the day, if a nutritionist can only handle 50 clients or 100 clients, how many nutritionists do you need to handle 100,000? About 1,000, right? At the least, or 2,000 or 2, kind of nutritionists. That's not a very scalable problem. So to be able to enhance their support systems, to be able to help them deliver more than what they can, we needed in the last one year to go deep into our own data and to probe into that and build really great artificial intelligence solutions that will allow them to, to, to enable them to scale better. So I want to talk to you a little bit today about what the components of, of a great artificial intelligence solution is. You know, AI is kind of like a buzzword right now. Everybody wants to talk about it. Not a lot of people who are talking about it actually understand it. And, and before AI, there was a huge craze around bots, and then bots failed, and now everybody's kind of moved away from bots. So it is a field that everybody's enamored with, but nobody really has any solutions around. Now, over the last one year, we've obviously awakened ourselves to the capabilities, and we found solutions. But at the bottom of it, we've realized that a great AI can be broken down into fundamentally three components. You need to have relevant data. You need to have assisted and self-learning. And you need to have a self-sustaining business model. Now, to, I just want to talk about it for a second. Relevant data means that you need to have data that you can actually learn from. Right? There are several companies I've visited in the Silicon Valley in the last one year. My co-founder has been there as well. The biggest problem that is today hampering companies out there is not the absence of algorithms. Algorithms are plenty out there. It's the absence of highly qualified, highly contextual data. Right? And uh, for example, there's a startup that's trying to replicate doctor health services using artificial intelligence. And, and the problem is they look at WebMD and they realize that only 2% of the data is usable because there's kind of noise out there. Similarly, a company tried to build a nutritionist program on Quora. It was very hard because, again, there's a lot of noise in Quora. Right? So people are suffering from the lack of relevant data. And, and, and that is something that we have in Healthify Me. All of our data is around health, fitness, and nutrition, and about nutrition as a client exchange. And I'll talk to you that in, in great, greater detail. Second is assisted and self-learning. Assisted learning is expensive. Assisted learning means you have to get experts, human experts, to validate that data, to edit it, improve it, et cetera, which is, which is expensive, right? It's very difficult to do that. You need to hire people in order to do it. And self-learning is incredibly hard. It means you have to design systems in a way that they self-improve themselves using either technology or using consumer interaction which is again a very hard problem to solve. Now I want to talk to you guys a little bit about how we solved that problem in the last one year. Lastly and more importantly, the reason AI companies are not really making great advances is because it's all a sunk cost today. Most of the companies that I met are taking in millions of dollars, investing it in R&D so that they can make a great solution in the future and then hope to monetize it. You know? um, but given in India, we don't have access to that kind of capital. We had to make a business model that works. And the good news is that all of our AI works in the last one year have come as a consequence of that business model as a byproduct, not as an end result of it. So what we have here is a self-sustaining business model engine that is creating relevant data and that is enabling assisted and self-learning. Right? So what I'm trying to tell you is in the last one year, we have discovered that we have indeed the makings of potentially a great AI. And I want to talk to you about that. So let's dive into relevant data first. And let's talk about that for a second. So if you move on a little bit, this, ladies and gentlemen, is a real map of our own consumers, of, of people spread all across the country from tier one to tier two cities. Um, and, uh, and what is fascinating about this data, thank you, is that more than half of it comes from beyond the top eight cities. Meanwhile, they are being serviced by nearly 200 of our nutritionists and trainers. Many of you are in the, in the, in the audience. Thank you for coming by. And you are present in mostly in the top cities from Delhi, Bombay, and Bangalore. You're catering to the entire depth of India today using our solution. We've got 2.8 million app downloads, 150 million foods and exercises. Let's think about that for a second. 150 million foods and exercises. That to us translates into 20 billion macro and micronutrients in terms of structured data. 
Also, these nutritionists and trainers have exchanged 10 million messages, as you saw in the intro video. That translates into, again, more than a billion words that have been exchanged. Now, this is highly relevant contextual data around nutrition and fitness. But let's take a second more and let's visualize this data and see how it has grown and developed in the last, um, in the last two, two and a half years, a little bit from before Ignite to now. So if I can request the team to switch to a live view and actually look at how the, how the, how the scale has developed. This was around the time we raised our Series A about a year ago. This was around time last Ignite. This was really in the beginning of January this year. And this has been the growth and progress this year in India alone. And you can kind of see the user density getting bigger and bigger in the country. Let's visualize it on a global scale. Thank you. So once again, this is when we raised our Series A. This is around the time of last Ignite, beginning of this year and then massive growth in the user access. Catering from the hearts of Bangalore and Delhi to pretty much the rest of the world. Yeah. But I talked, this is all structured data. These are macronutrient, micronutrient, these are food logs that have been tracked by individual steps, water, weight, exercises, calories burned. But let's go a step further, let's look at how nutritionists and trainers have exchanged their messaging between each other. So to do that, I want to, before I do that, I want to talk about how this is data is on a live basis, right? So how is it all happening right now? So these are actually current and live food logs and exercise logs. All the gold dots represent currently users who are tracking their foods. Blue dots are for water, green dots are for fitness, etc. And this is all a live map right now. You can see the counters going up with how many, 134 million foods tracked, um, 36 million workout logs. And, and you know, sometimes it's fascinating to look at this map. For example, um, you know, who knows that there is, there is somebody right now who's working out in Orissa, for example, or somebody who's, who's maybe going for a run in West Bengal and tracking it live on our application right now, right? Can we get closer into Bangalore and see what's going on over there? Just as a reference point, right? These are all the people that are currently in Bangalore. Maybe somebody's going for a... <laughs> for a run around Al Sur Lake or, or having a busy belly bath and, and we understand that, we know that and while we sleep and we wake up, this data is relentless. It keeps going and we keep learning from it. Month after month, week after week, GPS location after GPS location and all of that data starts to get accumulated. But like I was saying, this is structured data. What I would like to, like to next visualize is how are our nutritionists and our clients or our trainer and our clients exchanging data with each, with each other. So this is a, a time-lapse time view. All the orange dots are messages from nutritionists to our clients, and all the blue dots, blue rays, are actually messages from our clients to our nutritionists. And this is what we produce. We connect people from all over India to our top nutritionists and trainers. This is a live view, ladies and gentlemen. So um, you can see the kind of depth of uh, exchanges that we have. And we learn from it. And these things that you're seeing are coming from the sea. It's not actually sea. This is Lakshmadeep out here, and that's Andaman and Nicobar. We do have consumers there, too. Um, moving on. Uh, so, you know, that was a little on data. Um, let's, let's switch back to my presentation. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about what this data has enabled us to do, besides just learning for our own AI. This data has enabled us to, to, to talk to the government on how to improve their policies. Uh, I had the privilege of speaking to the Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, in Niti Aayog, in Women and Child Department, FSSAI, um, and various other seminars and forums recently. And I've been evangelizing and educating. You might have seen um, our post on healthifymeter.com this year talking about what India eats and how India exercises and what needs to change. This is just a map of India, but it's different states plotted out. And you can clearly see that women consume 13% less protein than men. In some states, that gender divide is bigger than in others, but something important for governments and industries to take action on. We are also able to, uh, back please, uh, we're also able to visualize data from, um, from different SKUs. So this was an exercise we did for a brand where we looked at their green tea consumption and compared in which states are they leading versus their competitors and lagging versus their compet competitors. And we can see this live, unlike other data providers, because we have that capability. Think about the value of this for insurance in the future um, and other systems. So keep moving on. Um, that was our, our data. But the next thing I want to talk to you guys is about assisted and self-learning and how that plays a big role in our own business model. So let's keep going. So ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet Jarvis. Um, this is an AI that we started, our first AI project started on it around the time last Ignite came through. 
where we started powering up our nutritionists and trainers with more contextual information about their clients. We fed 8 million messages, 150 million foods, 1 million kgs lost, etc., all into our AI systems, and we tried to build we try to build recommendations for our nutritionists and trainers as to what they should consider suggesting to the client right now, right? Um, moving on. And, uh, you know, we, 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 our understanding stemmed from the logs that the consumer had had previously, plus the messages that the consumer has exchanged with their clients, with their nutritionists previously. And we combined all of that to generate recommendations. For example, in this particular case, you can see that Jarvis recommended to our nutritionist saying, high on mesh, drinking beverages like Coca-Cola won't help you get to your target of 72 kgs. If you feel the need for sweet beverages, try drinking fresh juices. Fresh lime soda is a good alternative for aerated drinks. Now this may seem, and because the client consumed Coca-Cola. Now, a rule may have gotten triggered because the client consumed Coca-Cola. But why did that rule get triggered versus another rule? Because this rule invokes response. Because this message, when sent, we know will generate a response back effectively much with higher probability than other kinds of messages. Why use language like if you feel the need for versus don't drink sweet beverages? Because we know that this subtle nudge works better than the rest, all because of the data we have. We know response times of our clients, how fast they respond. We know their response sentiment. We know if they respond positively or negatively against that. And all of that started to create these self-learning kind of strategies. Because we started to know and Jarvis started to self-improve. At any given time, Jarvis knew that a certain message has a certain probability of response and a certain probability of likability. But that was not enough. Jarvis became a lot more intelligent when, our, when we allowed our nutritionists and trainers to start to edit those messages. So this edit button was quite powerful because those of you nutritionists and their trainers have been editing those messages. Our AI has been learning from that. Jarvis knows that you, you don't want to send the message in a certain way but in another way. That was the assisted learning component, which other companies pay millions of dollars to. Right? But this we don't have to because it's part of our business model. Right? I'm happy to tell you guys that at an operating level, we are already profitable. Our direct revenues are bigger than our direct costs. That creates an engine. That means that at a profitable way, we can actually improve and self-enhance the AI system that is supporting the nutritionists and trainers. Right? So, so this was Jarvis, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and I want to talk to you a little bit about what it produced. What it produced is that you know, this system started to become better. Jarvis became more and more intelligent. It started responding better. Our nutritionists and trainers were able to scale better. We used to handle only 40 clients earlier. We started handling 250 clients per coach, thanks to Jarvis. Right? But, and other dashboard improvements that we did. Um, but about nine months ago, um, a thought came to us and our team um, that all this learning that is happening today as part of Jarvis, it's becoming better over time. Can't we expose this learning? to the end consumer directly. Does each message have to go to a nutritionist or a trainer? Or can each message actually be uh, directly handled by an AI? Because it's already handling to a great degree of to accuracy. That's when Project Amadeus started as a stealth mode project. I think this Royal Orchid is very fascinating to me because that's where I got my top team uh, together and we huddled together for about a couple of days and nights um, in the uh, hotels, in the, in the rooms, and the topmost floor. And we just huddled and tried to figure out, is this even possible? Or are we genuinely smoking something? Well, you know, turns out that it is possible. We can indeed build this. Um, and, uh, and we have done a lot of advancement into that. Uh, we've indeed been able to accomplish intelligent systems that can converse and talk to human beings um, and talk to them about their nutrition requirements. But before I demonstrate that to you, I want to show you Amadeus's brain a little bit. So moving on, um, I, wanna, I want to demonstrate a little bit of what our knowledge graph looks like. And uh, to those of you who are here today, um, one second, if you can excuse me. To those of you who are here today, have we already joined Ignite platform? Or? Have you guys downloaded the app and joined something called Ignite, etc.? So you're well aware, right? Okay. So I, I want to showcase you uh, showcase something very interesting to you guys, right? What I'm going to do here is I'm going to build out the knowledge graph of us in this room and just showcase on how that looks like today, right? So I'm going to actually just track my evening. I'm going to track my favorite fruit which is Apple. So let me just track it and hit done and wait for it to populate up on the knowledge graph itself. So you can see me connected to my Apple that I like, right? Now I want all of you to open the app and track your favorite fruit. Swati, nice. You also like Apple, I appreciate that. Someone called Pragya also like, hey guys, not everybody has to like Apple. Please genuinely track whatever you want. Fascinating. 
Amadeus' knowledge graph is able to map consumers and their likes and preferences in terms of structured data and in terms of unstructured data, in terms of language data. And you can see as you guys are tracking your favorite fruits, it is sort of connecting us in some sort of a, a very interesting web together, a community of people, if I were to say that way. Right? Was to, let's, 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 let's pick up people from random. Thanks, Bala, for liking pomegranates. Appreciate that. Or at least there's someone called Balaji in there. Yeah. Um, so this is how Amadeus recognizes. It knows and is able to create clusters. For example, it knows that all these people, Swati, Kunjal, Alok, Anthony, Tejasri, are all like me when it comes to their likability for Apple, just based on today, just based on right now's data. And it knows that none of those guys are like Rumpa, Balaji, Surbi, who like actually pomegranates. So when Amadeus's job comes out to recommend a fruit, it will recommend apple to me and pomegranate to that cluster, right? for example. Now let's wipe this clean. Um, I want you to visualize all of the people sitting in this room alone who are part of the Ignite group. I want you to visualize their entire food logs this last one week. And other preferences too, please. Fitness exercises. Thank you. Goals. Great. So everything in blue here are fitness activities. Everything in red is food logs. Goals are like be fitter and lose weight. The system is self-learning, self-evolving. It's got of figuring out what's similar to what, likes and dislikes, preferences, and creating a structured data combination of everybody who's sitting around in this room right now. Let, 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 let's zoom out and just look at this. So you can see sort of these complex structures evolving. The spatial positioning talking about who's like who and who's likely to do what. And therefore, what recommendation should come to a certain cluster versus another cluster. Right? And by the way, this was just foods and fitness and goals. If we, we, we visually we figured out, we tried last night, we could maybe next ignite, we will. We couldn't physically structure out the billions of words that we have. Those 10 million messages representing that and likes and dislikes, the system was crashing every time we tried to even represent that. It is running in server, but the same knowledge graph of structured data also runs on unstructured purposes of messages and word clouds, and it connects people and it knows people. In fact, Amadeus has cut out India into 670 such clusters, macro clusters. Where, where people are connected within those clusters on commonalities of language, communication, food preferences, fitness preferences, goals, et cetera, et cetera. All right, I think that's enough. I think let's, let's remove this. Let's, it'll get too complicated otherwise. Um, and, and it does stabilize, by the way, if you keep it long enough. Um, and let's, let's actually showcase a little bit of Amadeus now. So today, for the first time, I want to launch our AI nutritionist called Ria in front of you. Um, <laughs> And, um, and I'm excited to tell you that it's got 200 man years of nutritionist intelligence, so literally two man centuries of nutritionist intelligence. It understands more than 10 medical conditions. It speaks in more than eight languages today itself. And it crunches those 150 million food logs and 20 billion nutritionist um, uh, micronutrients and macronutrients, as well as 10 million messages, which is a few billion words together to be able to create a single response to our clients. Um, so without any further ado, can we demonstrate Ria, if that's possible? So again, a um, lot of people have built bots, a lot of people have built uh, conversational engines. But the, the good thing that we have done is that we've gone inch wide and mile deep. Right? We've, we've stayed in this one domain of nutrition and fitness experience, and, 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 and we've built such depth around it that at least when it comes to nutritionist, uh, nutrition kind of questions and wellness questions, I kid you not, Ria actually outperforms some of the top AI solutions available. So I want to demonstrate it to you and then talk a little bit more um, about what, what is the making of Ria and how will it help us in business and beyond. So, so here you go. Um, this is currently, it's still in its alpha beta stages, and what I'm showing you is completely live. It's running on servers. Disclaimer, if it fails, bear with me. Hi. Hey, Tushar, how can I help you? Who 
are you? I am Rhea. I work at Healthify. You can ask me questions which could help you get healthier and fitter. So tell me how can I help you today? So, so let's actually try and find out. How was my day yesterday? You have reached 98% of your calorie budget. You have strike the right balance. You know how to maintain your macronutrients. Well done. <laughs> what were the unhealthy foods I had yesterday? What were the unhealthy foods I had yesterday? Samosa and chocolate pastry were the unhealthy foods you had. Do you want me to suggest replacements? Yes. Samosa is a tasty snack item, but try the grilled and baked versions of it to keep your calories in check. Okay. Um, so guys, this was basically Rhea and, and therefore learning from the Amadeus engine, looking at you know, 10 million messages, 150 million food logs, understanding your personal requirement, and then answering a question. But RIA does goes a step beyond. It actually integrates and tries to integrate with the external ecosystem as well, with uh, blogs, with e-commerce companies, with platforms. So let me, uh, let, me, let, let me demonstrate that. What should I have for a snack? Here are my suggestions. This can reach you in 35 minutes from Inner Chef via Swiggy. Order it. I'm sorry, I cannot place orders automatically right now. You can order from the link below. Right. So, and if, if I do, do click on it, it actually goes there. Um, but, you know, moving beyond. Um, what else? So many things I can actually showcase, uh, you know, and, 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 and I'm tempted to showcase, but, uh, but coming back, because the screen is frozen. Okay, seems to be just a bit of a lag. Just if I, should I? Yeah, should I continue? Yeah. Okay. Um, other things, data visualization about my patterns, such as, how was my protein progress last week? How was my protein progress last week? You logged seven out of seven days. Your average protein consumption on those days was 69 grams, which is 77% of your daily requirement. You exceeded your budget one out of seven days. Great job. So, so you know, that was just a bit of a data visualization. Um, but, you know, I, I can keep going on. And, you know, I'm sure you guys are curious about it. I'm sure you will check out it at the kiosk, and I'm sure you'll try to ask it all kinds of questions. Please do. The more you ask, the best part is the more it learns. So you see this thumbs up and down. If I click up, it actually understands. It means it's a good response. That's the self-learning component. If you click it bad, it classifies it as a bad response. And every time you engage with it, it keeps learning and keeps becoming better. So, um, you know, but all bots fail, as you know. What makes this special is that it is fail safe. It, it never fails. Why? Here's why. I had to read what message to ask that will break Rhea. Because for most of the messages now, Rhea is becoming pretty self-aware. It doesn't actually break. So, so let me actually just read out that message and then try it. Because it's been configured that Rhea will automatically try to not know this message. Um, what foods to avoid during festival season? Let's see. Right? So Rhea is thinking about it. That was way too intelligent even for me. Looking up for relevant blog articles for you. Alternatively, do you want to talk to a coach? Right? So where normal bots fail, RIA doesn't fail. Because if it's not sure, it does give you relevant information, by the way, 13 you know, ways to eat healthier during this Diwali, etc., etc. But it actually says, do you want to talk to a coach? Because it's not sure. And if you click yes, then it shifts the what handle to a nutritionist. will respond to your question shortly. That's when it shifts to the nutritionist, right then and there. So with Rhea coming alive, it is possible that it will handle more than half the use cases. And, and by the way, in our early pilots, it's been handling 80% of the use cases, just so that you know. 
And to all the lovely nutritionists and trainers sitting here, please by no means be scared that Ria is taking any jobs away. Um, Ria, Ria is only going to help us be more efficient. It will allow us to cater to far more number of clients that we were ever able to handle, not just in India and beyond, and maybe at tenth the price point. So, so there you go. Well, this, this coach, as in the garb of Roshni, has clearly responded. Um, you know, no matter what you're eating, eat small bites, relish it, opt for dry fruits. Thank you. Right? So, so clearly, um, the coach takes over when a bot fails. So, you know, many of your bots that you've been engaged with, right, creates all kinds of weird messages like Siri and assistant, and you kind of stop using it, but, but this one doesn't. Now, here's what the best part is that unlike other bots that actually fail, it not only self learns, but it not only is fail safe, but it self learns. So, the next time you ask the same question, let's see what happens. What foods to avoid during festival season? No matter what you are eating, eat small bites, relish it, it'll last longer and control your urge to take another piece. Opt for dry fruits instead of sweets if you can and drink loads of water. Ria is really smart, guys. It never makes the same mistake twice, ever. Um, and uh, just so I can have some fun, you know what we'll do next? Let's just compare Amadeus and Ria's engine to some of the more popular engines out there. Such as, I don't know, um, um, again, what should I eat for dinner? Here are my suggestions. This can reach you in 35 minutes from Inner Chef via Swiggy. Now let's ask the same question to Google Assistant. What should I eat for dinner? Here's a summary from eating well. Salad greens, lean protein, whole grains, and dessert. Very different kind of a response, right? That was far more contextualized to what you were about to eat versus this is a random general eat lean proteins, whole grains, right? Versus this, where it knows that I actually like, eat, like eating veg, raita, bangan, barta, and dal khichdi. Right? For example, let's, let's compare it with a couple, of other, um, a couple of other interesting things as well. The same question um, that we asked, for example, earlier, um, like, I don't know, um, what should I have for a snack? And it's able to respond back in a very Here personalized manner. Whereas if I was to ask the Google Assistant, what should I have for a snack? <laughs> I'm not doing this deliberately. What should I have for a snack? I like microchips. They certainly fuel me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> just, just look at the comparison. Right? Or... What should I work out today? I can't find a gym nearby. What should I work out today? Try a combination of some cardio and strength training today. Go for a run for 30 minutes and follow up with three sets of squats, lunges, and push ups. Make sure you stretch well before and after your workout. Happy working out, smiley face. So, and, and, and don't even bother comparing it with Siri. It, doesn't, it generally doesn't compare, right? And the reason is this only. We've gone inch wide, mile deep. And we know personalized information and knowledge about you. Whereas the other AI companies who are working have gone inch deep and mile wide. So maybe you can handle generic questions better. But when it comes to field of nutrition and fitness, our AI system is likely to always succeed. Um, well, that was Ria, guys. That was Amadeus. I think let's let Ria rest for a while. You can catch her at the kiosks outside, perhaps later. And let's switch back to my uh, to my presentation um, and continue along. So, so guys. Anyway, that was Ria, personally for you guys. Um, now, again, coming back to what makes a great AI, it was the components of having relevant data. It was having self and assisted learning, and it was having a business model that fuels those two. And clearly, Healthify Me has that. We have relevant data around nutrition and fitness. We have self and assisted learning, and our systems are becoming better and better over time, every time they engage with consumers like yourself. Next slide. And you know, we were able to, from 2014 when we started our CRM dashboards, uh, we were able to, we were only at 40 clients per coach. In 2016, we reached to about 250 clients per coach, thanks to Jarvis. 
but with Amadeus coming through, I'm quite confident that by sometime next year end, we'll be able to handle more than 1,000 clients per, co per coach. And that's, that's not just it. Um, I think Future of Health FIME is obviously going to be serving India and several other uh, parts within India and in the neighbor countries. But I think moving on, we can handle emerging markets as well, places which have similar cultural contexts as us, places that are similar nuances as us. And I'm so sorry if you will just to indulge me. Um, and and can, I, can we switch back to RIA demonstration? I just wanted to showcase one more thing. And we can handle developed markets such as US, even China, and languages that we cannot speak. But our coaches sitting here and nutritionists sitting here could potentially cater to the whole world tomorrow. Just for a second, I wanted to show you one more demonstration of how RIA is actually multilingual today. So I would like any Narcos fans in the, in the room by any chance? Yes, no? Yeah, all right, I see a few hands. So I'm a huge fan, so I, 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 love, I love sometimes trying out uh, my Spanish within that. Tell me, let me know when it's live. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Are we good? No? Do you want to just, just let me know when it's done. Actually, um, Anish, give me the phone. I'll just do it on a voice basis only. It's totally okay. So, guys, I can actually change settings in RIA to try and l let it um, access other languages as well. The one that I wanted to show you was just Spanish for a second. So if I was to ask it a question tomorrow, say in, in, in Spanish, which I'm not very good at, but pardon, pardon my Spanish. So, naranja o mango? It means orange or mango. Te sugiero que vayas con naranja, ya que tiene alto contenido de proteínas y bajas calorías, grasas, carbohidratos que el mango. <laughs> it, it actually is able to handle that. Or, and, and you should definitely try it out. Or, you know, all of Indic languages. Me ab kya khao? Ye rahe mire suchao. Ye hai inmer chief se pentas minute me suchi ke maathiyam se pentas sikta. Shukriya. <laughs> so, um, and I would like you to stress test this, guys. But the point is, I think the, the day is not far where sitting in India using our nutritionists and trainers, we can actually cater to the world without a problem. With this, and this is still such an early prototype stage. Just imagine what will be when we actually launch in those places and we start learning and training from that. And, you know, a media person just before asked me a question saying, how hard is it to be able to render other other you know, cultural nuances like food from different places, turns out it's not that hard. Um, every food can be broken down into only four things, protein, fat, carbs, and fiber, fundamentally. And everything else is just a layer on top. And even cultural nuances can be added. Language, underlying communications around wellness, fitness, motivation issues on trying to lose weight. You know, the, the uh, problems of sedentary lifestyles that we face are not very different. And certainly in emerging markets where the cultures are similar, I think we can really do a great job when we launch, and we do intend to launch for sure in the upcoming few months, certainly before Ignite next year. Um, but moving beyond, uh, you know, so we, we do believe that Coaches Plus AI can make a more, more healthified world, and then we look forward to sharing that with you. Um, I also believe, guys, that, and I generally feel this, that Amadeus's engine at the end of it is basically making sense of human interactions with experts, correct? And it's looking at structured data and language data to become smart about it. What we have been able to do today in nutrition, because of the business model that we created, I don't see it as a very difficult challenge that if this AI solution does indeed come out to be true, that we can scale what we have done to health, to education, and to finance broadly as well. I don't see why not. It may be an ambitious goal, but it is in, in, it's, it's indeed just a self-learning and evolving system around human interaction. So this can certainly be scaled, and I hope that at some point we will be able to deliver the same. Next slide. I also believe that what we have done with data and um, we can scale beyond just providing nutritionists and trainer services to being able to offer foods, diagnostics, insurance, and several things in our, in our, in our app that will make it a complete and a holistic platform for all of our consumers. A lot of it is what you will see today 
in, um, in the demonstrations and in the speeches and communications by the rest of the team members. And a lot of it will get to sample outside today as well. And again, in all of these things, for sure we are not the experts. We want to work with partners who can enable these and use the capabilities that we have and deliver a, a great and an outstanding job at it. Next one. Um, and why we believe that we will succeed is because fundamentally we are in a space that needs disruption. Um, you know, just raise your hand if you've tried to lose weight or become fitter in the last one year or so. You know, that's pretty much everybody except for a couple of obviously fit people. Um, and, and, and here's the thing, right? Everybody has this need, but there are, the solutions to it are very, very ancient. Gyms are a 1950s technology, potentially even earlier. I mean, Olympics comes from the word Olympics in ancient Greece. Nothing has changed from it. The only thing that has been done in technology is just simple calorie tracking apps, which to me, honestly, is, is just a summer project by an intern. It has to be something more meaningful. It requires deeper innovation because otherwise, these two billion people that we talked about internally are hurtling towards diabetes, obesity, cancer, and hypertension. Um, and I, we believe that we need to solve this problem, and we have the chops for it. You know how our app is the highest rated app in India. There's a reason why. We are the UX experts, and our AI capabilities are self-sustaining and self-scaling, as you already witnessed. But lastly, and, and most importantly, is because the team that is fundamentally putting this together for you are here for the impact. We're not here for the money or the glory. We're here to make a change, genuinely. You know, to many of you who know me personally, I had moved to India to join Aadhaar out of a call for trying to deliver change and impact in the country. After Aadhaar, I lived on 100 rupees a day and 32 rupees a day to test and see what an average Indian and a poor Indian feels like. And I started Healthify Me because I believed I could create a sustainable model to deliver change and impact. And I think that culture runs not just in me, but in every other team member who has joined the team since. And together, we deliver that. And I think that is perhaps the reason, if I want to showcase just the next slide. This is from three years ago, in 2014. Interestingly, when we ran out of money, this is during that time, we had the first version of our Ignite on our rooftop in a little office house equivalent place in, in near, nearby, in Domlur. Right when we were total stream strength was hardly 20, 30 people. And, and, and this is the faces of a team that is on no salaries at that time, right? For almost three months. Um, because, you know, we've never run out of our spirit. We may have run out of our money, but we've never run out of our spirit. And I think that fighting spirit continues in the team today. In fact, what I'm very proud to tell you is that everybody who's left of Sachin um, is indeed in the company even today and is in fact part of the leadership in the company today. Um, and, um, and I think that's the testimony to the strong culture that we have. Um, and also, it, it, it's, a, it's a pro tip to not stand on the right side of Sachin in today's <laughs> photograph. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so outside that, guys, I think I would like to just end with saying that you know, our team believes in doing the impossible. Hashtag do the impossible is, a, is something that we follow internally. We, we like taking impossible challenges. We hate predictable and possible challenges, whether it was the orbit change earlier in January when we took our company to a different heights, or whether it is something like Project Amadeus, which is fundamentally a very difficult human problem to solve. And make no mistake, by the way, Rhea is like a three-year-old right now. She knows very little, and she's learning every single time you engage with her. And Amadeus is becoming more powerful. It'll probably take us months, if not quarters, for it to become truly successful. Starting today, Rhea will be in some of your phones. She's already there in many of your phones, by the way. You just don't know it. And, and it'll start exposing itself slowly, but it'll grow. It's a very difficult challenge. And to all of those who are watching the web stream and will watch it from here on, it's an open call to all people who want to innovate in the field of human improvement using AI. We'd like you to join us and partner with us to help solve this very difficult problem. But, but we like difficult problems, because if it's easy, it's not worth it. If we had to make money, we could have built another e-commerce platform and scaled it. That's not the issue. We wanted to do something that's fundamentally difficult and that's fundamentally game-changing for us as a civilization. Um, so with that, I would like to uh, end this part of the keynote, give the baton on to my team who has some phenomenal showcases for you, and thank you for being patient and listening to me during this time. Work culture and environment around Healthify Me has always been fun, vibrant, and totally alive. We work together, we work out together, and celebrate everyone's accomplishments. So when I first week at Healthify Me, uh, I, I was supposed to organize the Super Saturday, 
and uh, we were just a 10 member team at that point and we were in a small office it was a 2 bhk that we were working out of it was really really hectic we had to do everything from sweeping the floors to um getting uh, sitting at the printers for the entire day when i joined the company there are hardly 30 people in the company it's phenomenal to see that right now we are 300 it's very great to be a part of this story healthify me um, gave me the right start to my career opportunities to grow and learn has been amazing and the best that i could have asked for so i really love to travel going uh, exploring new places actually and uh, the healthify me allows me to plan my trip accordingly like that so uh, i get to choose work remotely sometime and going places that's the best part of the job okay i've been working at healthify me for about a year now uh, before that for about 7 8 years i worked with uh, five different startups and uh, This has been by far the best culture that I've experienced. Every individual in this organization has complete access to the leadership team of the company. Right? You are free to bounce off ideas. You are free to bring in any thoughts, whatever you have. Share it directly with even Tushar. Uh, not sure of how many companies have this kind of culture. Now, since we've grown, we found out that we've decentralized and distributed the ownership. Today, when I walk into office, I see teams working on technologies and frameworks that I have not heard of, and they get into production all by themselves, which is the most awesome thing I can think of. What's different about and unique and particularly uh, special about Health of Ami is that I think everyone takes their work very, very seriously. Uh, it's very personal to them. They bring in a lot of passion. It's also one of the most intellectually stimulating places to work. Uh, because of the kind of people there are that you work with uh, the the kinds of uh, ideas which 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 would be shared uh, will really challenge you and uh, stimulate you intellectually it's been three and a half years since i've been working with alfai me and every day has given me new memory uh, seen the team grow from 10 people to 350 i had the opportunity to actually grow multiple teams handle multiple verticals and it's been a phenomenal journey so far we are honest hard workers We always meet our targets and we hold on to our word. We rapidly chase growth. We pride ourselves on the quality of our service. There was one word to define it. I think it would be passion. Passion for change.